All right, here we have um, July 6th, 2019. And we have had some series of earthquakes. One made the news, but if you notice, there are a lot of smaller earthquakes, and like I have lo been looking up before, um, we also have that little dot in Montana. That is Yellowstone. Um, so, I'm, I just think it might be a reflection on the seismic monitor. I don't think they're connected. But maybe. There's an earthquake theory that says the eclipses cause the earthquake two days after an eclipse. And I'm gonna bring that up here. Uh, here we go, right here. Can a solar eclipse trigger an earthquake? Okay, so this article was written way ahead of time. This has been a standing theory for a long time. The moon and solar eclipses triggering earthquakes. Here's the path of the earthquake from the NASA satellite. So while we're at the NASA satellite, we're going to take a look and see if the, uh, the rovers discovered anything. And the rover over there took out the microscopic grinder. And I was looking around for today. Um, they had some images that were pretty interesting, like... Uh, Look at that, on the microscopic level. And I was like clicking on them. And look at that, it's just like at the microscopic level, it's just like interesting features and textures there. Um, but the weather has been weird on Earth. Uh, the weather's been weird on Mars, but uh, that's going to be another video. So back on uh, the 4th of July here, there was an earthquake. But see, it's smaller. Here you can see the earthquake reflecting all over the United States in this animation. Look at that. It, it goes all the way to Maine and the earthquake seismic monitors there. Which is interesting. It's the re That's why I think that the Yosemite monitor was just recording a reflection. So here we go to the NOAA satellite pictures for the weather. Um, there's some like hurricanes going on in the Pacific. And the mountains, the coastal mountains of California are blocking like the clouds or at least transforming the clouds into moisture. So there's California right there. That was an inland sea in records, ancient records. Um, so probably the sediment built up in that valley. It's still called river bottom soil. And it's fertile in that valley for growing crops. 
So how could you have a river bottom soil through that whole valley if it wasn't a lake or a, a sea or something? So here we're going to Google Maps. This is Yosemite viewed from Google Maps. It looks like a square chunk has been taken out. You could go and look at it for yourself. So this is Half Dome. It actually looks like a a water project, a dam created by somebody. And look at the sediment in the bottom behind Half Dome there. I mean, that's an, an earth-filled dam created by somebody in ancient times. So that was like a lake at one time back there. So here's Yosemite webcam on that date. Like a spillway set to autopilot. A lot of water flowing out there. So we're going to go to the, the river downstream from this waterfall. So it's called the Merced River. And it is full to the banks right there. So downstream from that river, we're going to go to Google Maps again. We're going to go to Oroville Reservoir. Okay, here's the top view from Google. See the spillway there in the reservoir in Orville Dam, the largest earth filled dam in the world. You can rent a houseboat. Um, depending on how long of a footage you want in your boat and how many people you want to sleep. So I was looking at renting a houseboat for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Taking that houseboat and going to every part of that lake on an expedition. So it was like $5,000 to rent it for that amount of time. For for like a uh, medium-sized houseboat. Um, but look at that. It's, so there's lots of... This is an old photo when the lake was down. It's full to the brim right now. Orbo. So this is this water's released down to the San Francisco Bay through the whole valley. There's the valley there. In the San Francisco Bay. Continental Shelf. There are islands there. There's actually the um, spillway. So not much is coming out, or there is a little trickle coming out. Still not a lot of snow melt. <clears throat> Here's the Oroville Lake. And the valley, looking from the visitor center in Oroville. Look at all the uh, tributaries, the rivers, streams and creeks are completely full saturated so I'm not surprised that um, I am surprised that there's no northern California earthquakes when this dam gets full there's earthquakes look at that there's a current there going through that spillway 
they're releasing so much water through the generator spillway that there's a huge like you can't say whirlpool but there's a current going through that outlet there so the outlet to the left is through the generators and the one to the right is the spillway there's the uh, eye level view of the lake where you could rent the houseboats so there's giant sturgeon supposedly in the lake I've caught in salmon there like freshwater salmon um, Coho salmon, you know, trout, uh, bass are towards the uh, shoreline of that lake. But if you're on a houseboat, pontoon boat type thing, and uh, you're in the middle of the lake and it's hot and you jump in the water, it's very refreshing, very nice. Um, so here's the uh, since I was on the NASA website, here's the Apollo 11 moon landing, and they're gonna put the flag. This is like the video. The flag planting video. I found it when I was looking at um, NASA. I was looking for the eclipse. And I don't see the flag waving in the wind. Um, it just looks like they carried it to the moon. And they plopped it open. So I've never been in the vacuum of space. I don't know if, you know, so, so the moon is not a total vacuum. There is like gases coming off of it, but, um, anyway, that's 4th of July and we got the flag and there we go.